All right. So since we've been doing this channel, we've been doing a lot of movies. We've done everything from action movies. We've done sci-fi movies. We've done horror movies. We've done American animation. We've done anime. But uh, we did a cannibal movie. But there's one movie on my list that we haven't done yet, and it's a Christian filth-based film. And so I talked to my God. And let me have you know he protects those gifts really well. Go out and see him yourself. But wait a minute. I believe he does also eat planets. Eh. Nothing worse than what Christian gods do. So uh, today I went to the movie theater to see my first Christian based film in the theater. Unlike that other stuff uh, that I've seen but I've only seen it at home so and I haven't done any reviews of those yet because I'm not going to be the one to suffer through those things alone. He will be here. So I automatically saw it was a Christian film so I said why not let's go watch it. So I thought I was getting a I thought I was going to get a film made by these guys. You know Pure Flicks. The people who got, got, gave given us such awful movies. Such as God's Not Dead. Such as Voiceless. Such as Old Fashioned. And of course, my personal biggest offender, War Room. No, this isn't done by them. This is done by the studio who fucked up Spider-Man so bad, they had to send it back tomorrow. That's right, this is a Sony movie. And I am very angry at this movie. You want to know why I'm angry at this movie? It's actually pretty good. What movie am I talking about? All Saints. All Saints is based on the true story of a pastor by the name of Michael Spurlock who is sent to a parish in Tennessee and his job is there to, is to help set up the church to be sold. The church has many issues. One, it has only a congregation of 12 people. Two, they have a high debt for, they have a high mortgage and they have to get rid of it because they can't continue to pump in money where there's no congregation. Pretty simple. Michael himself, played by John Corbin, is just there is to sell the place. Michael's backstory is that he is a former paper salesman and he has a big issue with authority figures. So he gets sent to this parish and he sees that no one's there and that he's just there to sell the place. After a while he figures out, well, why don't we try to fix it up a little bit or try to get people to come before we leave. We can have one big grand hur hur hurrah on our way out. What happens? He ends up setting up posters. One of the posters happens to be in a welfare office where one of our other leads um, sees it and what his thing is, his name is Ying Wen, and what he is, he is a Burmese refugee. And he has a whole group of refugee people with him and they have basically no food barely speak English and you know they just, and they're trying to make their way in America in Tennessee of all places so they decide to go to the church Michael decides to do the Christian thing and help them out and try to help them out as much as he can what ends up happening is they end up finding out that they're good that while they were in Burma and in the refugee camps that they learn how to work the land they learn how to work the soil now since the church is on this big property they said well wait your soil is pretty good why don't we grow crops on it Michael's character decides why not let's do it 
that way we can use whatever we grow to not only help you guys eat but also we can we can we can make enough to pay the land so we can keep the parish which is pretty cool nice message people helping each other and no one no one is judging people no one's persecuting people why hasn't pureflix pureflix figured out how to do this shit yet <laughs> much like a tootsie roll pop the world will never know so that's pretty much the setup for the movie the movie is actually like i said it's a pretty good movie if you're if you like christian based movies that are really about christian based practicing what they preach this is a good movie to watch also why the hell are you watching my review <laughs> odd but it is and uh, let me talk about some of the characters. John Corbin as the main character, Michael, he does a really good job. Um, because his character arc is that he's someone who has to figure out, you know, that, oh, I have this land. Wait, I don't want to sell it. I want to expand it. I, wanna, I want the congregation to grow. And he, do, he sells it really well. Um, the other character, um, Yin Win, does a really good job as well, you know, deciphering, you know, being the peacemaker between his people, the refugees, and Michael's character, and trying to also at the same time help all the refugees try to become Americanized. You see him the weight on his shoulders as you really see the weight on his shoulders as he's trying to figure out how to help all these refugees and that's exactly what it does to the point where he loses his wife his wife leaves him because she's helping all these people out get jobs helping them pay their bills things like that so once again a very positive message um, also at the same oh the character of Forrest Forrest the grumpy old man this is a guy who exists kind of to show Michael's character his hubris because Michael's very hard-headed and also wants to do everything by himself. He believes that he has the power to. Forrest, you know, is trying to knock him down and by the end of the movie, you know, he and between him and his wife, they show him that he can't do anything alone and that it's okay to ask for help. Once again, good message. Now for my problems with this movie. This movie is a lot of coincidental stuff. It really does. Especially towards the end. It seems to go in like, uh oh, something bad happened. Oh, but I happen to know something to fix it. Boom. Oh, something bad happens again. Oh, I know something to fix it again. V Ex Machina is all over the place near the end. And there's not a lot of explaining to do. You see his congregation grow and you never see why or how. That, that's definitely a problem. The movie also doesn't have a movie feel. Or at least a theater, theatrical feel. It feels like a movie that should have been on the Hallmark Network or on Lifetime. It never builds up to anything huge or grand. There are times it tries, but it doesn't really work. Also, there's a lot of corny moments in this movie there's a part when Michael first get there Forrest the, the the character Forrest doesn't like him to the point where he goes up to him and Michael asks you know why don't you like me and Mike, Forrest goes I know why you're here you're here to sell the place and then leave and then Michael goes to him and tells him the truth he goes you have 12 people in this congregation and Forrest does an absolutely sitcom type line where he goes, you know who else only had 12 followers? Jesus! <laughs> Slap my knee funny. There, there's a couple of humorous jokes like that where it's, it's, it doesn't really play well in a movie. You know, but you might laugh at a couple of them. So there's that. Um, also, the, the little kid never is really convincing. Michael's son... 
is never really convincing. I didn't really like him in the movie. Um, I will give it credit. The movie does really go quickly. So I'll, there's that. Because the movie is only an hour and 40 minutes. Which is really short nowadays. And it never stopped to indulge itself. Or to look at anything. It just like, you know, let's plow along and hit our beats. And very ex machina like at the end. Um, also the there is another corny moment where the bishop comes to deliver a message at the end and all the characters just look at him and I'm like why is everyone looking at him all of a sudden Forrest stands up and says in plain English what the the, the bishop just said and then all of a sudden everyone's like ah! that was a very corny moment I was like he didn't say anything with a big language everyone should have got that so that was kind of um, intriguing, um, or corny, I should say. What I will say is intriguing is a lot of the Burmese, the Burmese refugees in this movie, were actually are real people. They're not actors, which is a very interesting concept and very cool. Not a lot of them get much to do, but it is very cool that they actually got, you know, people who are refugees to play the refugees. Definitely diversifying Hollywood and Christian flicks. So I will give it that. Um, you know, I'm... Obviously I'm not of the faith, so this movie wasn't made for me. And I don't know if I can rec I can recommend it as maybe a matinee if you're, if you're into Christian um, faith-based movies. Or um, for everyone else, just wait till it comes on. It's a harmless watch. It's, and if you're someone who uh, who loves those Lifetime movies and like emotional settings, this will kind of get you at certain times. So, Or you'll just be happy that everyone gets a happy ending. Um, also, one of the things I learned in this is the main character, the real-life main character, Michael Spurlock, actually is a pastor on 53rd Street in the, in the uh, cathedral. So maybe I'll stop by and say hello. And uh, pick up a little pointers about God. Not you. So I will say that, um, I don't know, after this movie. Um, as far as rating goes, this movie isn't based for me, so I'm going to give it two ratings. My rating, probably a six. I was never offended by anything. Uh, it didn't bore me. You know, I kind of laughed or rolled my eyes at certain places, but the acting was good. The main character, played by John Corbin, did his job really well and he helped carry the movie, even during some of the sillier moments. Um, so I gave it a six. It was harmless. Do I think I'd buy this on DVD? No. Uh, would I watch it on Netflix one day? Yeah, why not? I'd be like, all right, let's watch this. Or even as something for the background while I'm doing something else. Then I would do it. Um, if I was a Christian-based person, I'd probably give this an 8. It shows everything that a faith-based movie should do and everything that the people who believe in that stuff should be doing. It never judges anyone. It never tries to be a persecution story. It never tries to villainize people that for no reason. It doesn't try to make you feel bad about yourself if you're not one of these people. So that's a lot of good right there. Um, I would say go out of your way to watch this for everyone else. Probably wait till it goes on the streaming services. My final thought is, I don't know, maybe after seeing this movie, I too have found my faith. Maybe I too will believe in the Lord and plot conveniences. Until next time.